all, good evening, and uh, what a wonderful day, and boy, the temperatures getting back, uh, yes, very much the way they should be at this time of year, but it does feel good for a change, and nice and cool in the morning, warms up in the afternoon, I guess that's what we want. A little moisture, maybe on the way about midweek, uh, we'll have to wait and see, and uh, just as hoping it, it isn't uh, one of those big uh, thunder boomers or something like that, but uh, yeah, a little rain in the forecast for a day or so, along with the... Uh, new heat wave that's coming our way. We'll check that weather for you at the end of our news this evening. Well, the Sydney Herald reports that the Three Buttes 4-H Club elected not to clean a highway located in Richland County any longer, and meth expert Brian Irwin says that's a safe decision. He told residents why during a meeting in Lambert Wednesday night. Tammy Goss the treasurer of the Three Buttes 4-H Club said the group decided to drop its Adopt-A-Highway contract because of fears of touching items tainted with methamphetamine. Goss, who will be a Lambert High School senior this fall, said parents brought up the concern when club members discussed their annual cleanup campaign. We didn't know if we should go because of all the meth stories going around, Goss said. It sounds like there's a lot of waste after they cook the meth, and they just throw it in the road ditches to get rid of the evidence. Well, after hearing a recommendation from an area parent, Goss asked Irwin of the Big Muddy Drug Task Force to present a program in Lambert about the dangers of meth and picking up potentially tainted items. If you come across any containers with unidentified liquids in them, don't touch it. It could be deadly. Call your local law enforcement to come check it out, Irwin said. Our motto is, you call, we haul. You should never touch it or move it because you don't know what it is. Irwin told an audience of about 40 residents that the signs of meth use include overactivity, a suppressed appetite, very focused yet short attention spans, loss of weight under eyes and in the cheeks, and lack of sleep. Users tend to pick at themselves, he went on. Women tend to pick at their faces, while men tend to scratch their arms or legs because they feel like bugs are on them. Users often exhibit a high level of agitation and the highest degree of paranoia, according to the Drug Task Force data. He went on to say, we don't have a huge production problem here in eastern Montana, but we do have a huge import and use problem, Erwin said. Well, the Montana Supreme Court says arguments in the state school funding lawsuit will begin October 20th at 1.30 p.m. Lawyers from both sides say that will be enough time for this case to finish before the 2005 legislature convenes. The court case will look at whether Montana's system of funding education is unconstitutional as a district court ruled earlier this year. The state filed an appeal June 18th. The plaintiff's uh, lead attorney, Jim Malloy, asked the court to fast track the case when he filed cross appeals on that same day. The state agreed to a fast appeal in part because its lead defense attorney, Brian Morris, is running for a Supreme Court seat and would no longer be able to represent the state if elected. Well, it is that time of year again, isn't it? You thinking of traveling? You gonna take your pet? Well, the consumer guy has some help for you. It may be hard to convince your dogs you're their best friend if you leave them behind when you travel. Sometimes I go on little trips and I have to leave with my wife, but I hate leaving her. Oh, it's always hard the first, at least the first couple of days because you think, oh, they're missing us, they're, they're pining away. You might think it's tougher to find a pet-friendly hotel than buried treasure, but you'd be barking up the wrong tree. It's easy to find a room at the beach or anywhere else. The resort town of Carmel, California is particularly friendly to four-legged visitors. It's really kind of fun because you meet these people that have been coming here with their families for over, my goodness, you know, 30, 40 years. Well, now that we know there are plenty of hotels and motels out there that accept pets, how do you go about finding them? 
AAA, as well as book and pet stores, offers several travel guides for pet owners that list places like Doris Day's upscale Cypress Inn. But you don't have to use a book to find fur-friendly lodging. More now through the internet, uh, I'm going to the pet-friendly sites. Travelpets.com and PetsWelcome.com offer pet-friendly hotel listings all over North America, with lots of extra information as well. One of those like web uh, hotel reservation places, you can check you know, all the options, and one of them options was you know, pets, and this came up. And some places accept cats, birds, and other animals. I'm Ellis Levinson, the Consumer Guy. Wow. <laughs> Some of those places for pets look uh, a lot better than the places I've stayed in a time or two. <laughs> well, Democratic gubernatorial candidate Brian Schweitzer has named attorney Eric Stern his campaign manager. Schweitzer says he needed help campaigning after 16 months without a, uh, uh, without a manager. Stern, who has been living in Bozeman for the past three years, is originally from New Jersey. He attended Columbia University Law School and has worked in the Clinton administration and in presidential campaigns. Schweitzer has been acting as his own campaign manager, getting scheduling help from his brother, Walt. Stern's father, David, by the way, is the commissioner of the National Basketball Association and a frequent contributor to Democratic campaigns. Eric Stern says he worked in the 1992, 96, and 2000 Democratic presidential campaigns. Something a little closer to home this evening, Ward County officials say that a Tioga man is dead after a tractor accident over the weekend. Authorities say 67-year-old Kenneth Lawson was driving a tractor that was pulling another vehicle through weeds when he struck a piece of iron. The tractor flipped. He was pinned under it. Ward County Deputy Jamie Kenyon says it happened northeast of Kenmare late Sunday afternoon. He says Lawson was dead on arrival at a Kenmare hospital. We say closer to home because uh, that Mr. Lawson is a relative on my wife's side of the family, and our condolences go out to his family. We'll be back with more news right after these messages. He stood about five foot nine inches tall, but he was a giant, Billy Thomas. He ran the Boys and Girls Club where I grew up. Now, I know today is different. Young people face problems I never even had to think about. But that's why now we need the Boys and Girls Club. It's a positive place where thousands of people like Billy Thomas help young people succeed. Does it work? It did for me. Yay! Support the Boys and Girls Clubs. Ager isn't your typical TV sportscaster. By choice and necessity, he's the reporter, cameraman, editor, and everything else at the nation's smallest TV station. Since we appeared on that TV show, which was, of course, HBO's Real Sports, Pizza Hut has asked us to join with them in honoring the many fine young athletes that we have in our viewing and listening area here in eastern Montana by awarding four or five large pizzas, depending on the number of requests we get, to some outstanding athletes of the month. Well, here's how it works. All coaches of every sport during the whole year, that's football, basketball, track, baseball, whatever, swimming. We've got a lot of swimming teams in the area. Coaches, send me, Ed Ager, KXGN, your nomination for Athlete of the Month. Now, it's underway. Right now, we've got it started. So, coaches, please, start thinking about your school's representative in our Athlete of the Month contest. The pizzas are ready now. We want our Pizza Hut KXGN list of champions to grow to include an athlete from every school in our viewing and listening area by this time next year. So, join us now. Well, again, lots to talk about as far as sports is concerned. You think we're without sports in the summertime. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> lots going on. Let's uh, take a look at what's going on. We'll get you updated on a bunch of different sports activities. And while we do that, here in Glendive this past weekend, the uh, Cottonwood Country Club held uh, their big uh, 
Open, one of their big open tournaments for the year. Got a few pictures out there for you so you can watch some of the golfers and look at the beautiful golf course and the scenery at the golf course while we talk about some other sports. Let's go. Well, we'll start it off talking about some wrestling. And wow, hey, this is great. Wrestling in the high school team division at the National Scholastic Wrestling Duos. This was at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Sydney rolled to an unblemished 8-0 record heading into semifinal action this past Thursday. They were only one of four teams to be undefeated at that point in the tournament. With just two upperclassmen and senior Gary Melby and junior Doug Copeland, Sydney went one and two in the semifinals to capture a most impressive fourth place out of a tough 69-team field. In a tournament like this, you never know where you stand until you get there. And with a young team like this, we did a great job of stepping up. They defeated three of four state championship teams, and that from head coach Guy Melby. Well, congratulations go out to that uh, Sydney wrestling team. Then, last night here in uh, Glendive, of course, we had some uh, baseball action. Our Glendive Blue Devils, the American Legion baseball team, played a doubleheader with Cold Strip. Trounced them both times, and I've got to say this, the bottom of the fourth inning for Glendive was probably the longest and the most active half inning of baseball I have ever broadcast in my life. 20 batters came to the plate in the bottom of the fourth inning. They scored 14 runs the final, of course being called after five, was uh, Glendive 25, Cold Strip 1. The Blue Devils now travel uh, Wednesday to Glasgow and then will be at a big Dickinson tournament over the weekend. Well, Montana State University Billings men's basketball coach Craig Kars has announced that three transfers have fine national letters of intent to play for the Yellow Jackets next season. Uh, two are from out of state. The third one is Wacy Weeks from Wolf Point, Montana. He'll transfer after playing two seasons at Miles Community College. The six foot five inch guard forward averaged 11 points per game for Miles Community College last year. He helped Wolf Point High School to back to back runner up finishes the Class A state tournament as a junior and senior, earning all state honors both years. As a senior, he averaged 22 points and 12 rebounds a game. Well, turning to some rodeo action now. Dan Mortensen of Billings continues to lead the Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association Saddle Bronc event with nearly $80,000 in earnings this year. Uh, Mortensen has led the event for months now. Ryan Mapson of Geyser is seventh at 31, over $31,000. Sean Stroh of Glendive is 14th, and Jesse Martins of Dillon has won about $15,000. Cody Buller of Glendive is fourth in bull riding at more than $51,000 in earnings. In barrel racing, Molly Powell of Sims is 17th. Terry Kirkland of Billings is 19th. And in team uh, roping, heading, Clay Tryon of Billings is 7th. Travis Tryon of Billings is 18th in the standings. And as we've been trying to do is get you updated on rodeos as they're coming up, We've got two big uh, Montana PRCA Pro rodeos scheduled for this weekend. I know there's lots more scheduled, but these are two of the bigger ones that we have on their list. The Home of Champions Rodeo at Red Lodge will be on July 2nd through the 4th. Your contact man is Jim Bushnell at 446-1011. And uh, in Livingston, it's the Livingston Roundup Rodeo and uh, Bruce Becker is the band of contact there at 222-2905. So that's what's coming up as far as rodeos are concerned. Let's turn elsewhere in sports now. More than 200 members and guests recently congregated in Lewistown for the annual Montana Stock Growers Association mid-year meeting. Now they met to create policy, of course, attend educational forums, and enjoy networking with others in the livestock industry. A focal point of this year's conference, themed Beefing Up the Industry, 
was a visit from Al Johnson, chief agricultural negotiator for the U.S. Trade Representative. Johnson shared his focus and goals of international agriculture trade during Thursday morning's opening general session, discussed recent trade agreements that have benefited U.S. cattle producers, and emphasized that there are strong differences of opinion on trade within the livestock industry. Looking at the debate today, he said, there are two visions. One is inward-looking economic isolationism. The other is outward-looking and optimistic. He added, the inward vision limits us to our domestic market, which has a flat demand and increasing pressure as production increases, but demand doesn't. With only a domestic market, our productivity will soon outgrow our demand. The outward view is to make this world a better place and to improve the world for others. One view provides us access to 100% of the world's population, the other access to only about 4%, he went on to say. Well, let's turn now to the Glendive Farmers Elevator. Here are your closing grain prices for today. 12% spring wheat was at 327 today. 13% at 347, 14 at 367, 15% spring wheat closing at 379. Ordinary winter wheat, 301, 11.5%, 310, 13% winter wheat, 327. Feed barley was unchanged at $1.85. Corn remained at $3.25. And for your information, big weekend coming up over in Terry. It's the 56th annual Open Rodeo. See, there's another one. And it'll be at the Prairie County Fairgrounds on July 4th. Grand entry at 1 p.m. at Calcutta on Saddle Bronx, Barrel Racers, and the Wild Horse Race. That'll start about 12.15 p.m. There'll be food stands serving lunch at the fairground, so you can get over there and just enjoy yourself with the whole family. It's produced by the Terry Roping Club. And remember, the kids' rodeo will start at about 9 a.m. in the morning. There'll be live music at the fairgrounds following the rodeo starting at about 7 o'clock. Sounds like lots of fun. Well, psychologist Dr. James Dobson, on our Focus on the Family commentary, notes the difference between effective disciplinary action and anger. What's the most common error made by parents in disciplining their children? I believe it's the inappropriate use of anger in attempting to manage boys and girls. Now, unfortunately, most adults rely primarily on their own irritation to make children cooperate. One teacher said on a national television program, I love being a professional educator, but I hate the daily task of teaching. My children are so unruly that I have to stay mad at them all the time just to control the classroom. How utterly frustrating that would be, and how ineffective. See, disciplinary action influences behavior. Anger does not. I'm convinced, in fact, that adult irritation actually creates disrespect in the minds of kids. They can see that our frustration is caused by our inability to control the situation. See, we represent justice to them, and yet we're on the verge of tears as we flail the air with our hands and we shout empty threats and warnings to them. Now, I'm not recommending that parents and teachers conceal their legitimate emotions from their children. My point is merely that anger often becomes a tool for the purpose of controlling children, and it doesn't work. It's ineffective, and it can be damaging to the relationship between generations. Instead, try taking a little corrective discipline that your children will care about, and then administer it with cool. With Focus on the Family, this is Dr. James Dobson. Check on the weather comes your way next. As you'll see, a little hint of moisture in the forecast but highs should be right up there around that 90-degree mark for at least a couple days. And then into the weekend, looking good for all the activities all over eastern Montana. We'll try and talk about some of those in this week, but there's lots going on. You have a great day tomorrow, and by golly, come on back here with us tomorrow night. We enjoy having you with us.